Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of the new series on systems programming, we're going to go ahead and look at uh, a file I.O., which is generally the first thing that most people in a systems pro programming course uh, will end up covering. So first of all, we need to kind of understand what we're talking about when we mean systems programming. So system programming boils down to, for the most part, the use of system calls. So system calls are just how we access uh, what's known as kernel space, where the operating system is running, uh, from user space, or it's rather, or rather, it's how we make requests uh, to the operating system running in kernel space uh, from user space. And so these type of requests can be dealing with files, it can be dealing with memory. Uh, we'll see that there's a lot of things that you know this kind of entails. Uh, but you know, starting out, we're going to look at you know some basic stuff dealing with files and file descriptors. So when we're talking about you know, files, this will end up being very important uh, in terms of Unix-like operating systems based because of this idea of, you know, everything as a file. So this just means that things that you may think, you know, oh, well, you have your notion of what a file is, and you may think of something else as not a file, but we'll see that, you know, many things, uh, the way that we end up interacting with them in these Unix-like uh, operating systems, uh, specifically Linux, we tend to interact with a lot of things as if they were files, and we'll see you know, kind of how that plays out. So in this first example, we're really going to cover just the basics of a file I.O. So we'll go ahead and open up our file. And so we'll include a couple of headers. So we'll, for uh, our file control operations, we'll include this uh, fcontrol.h, and then we'll include another uh, new header uh, for you know, closing uh, the file and uh, using the file descriptor that we have. Now I've said file descriptor a lot, but I haven't said what that is, so we should get to that now. So basically what happens is that, you know, per process, there's a list of open files that are associated with that process, and this is called a file table. Now every entry inside of this file table includes this non-negative integer called a file descriptor. So the file descriptor is really just how we match you know, here's a path to some file, we'll give it a non-negative integer to represent that path. And so, you know, these table entries, they contain more information than just an integer for the file descriptor, uh, but that's something that we'll leave to later um, when we actually want to say use that information. But by default, we've got three standard file descriptors, and that's this uh, standard in, standard out, and standard error. Now, you may be familiar with, you know, th this terminology through something like C++, where you may think, oh, well, this is rather similar to what I know as far as C in, C out, and C error. Uh, and you'd be correct. So in a lot of higher level languages, uh, you know, things like these file descriptors really get kind of abstracted away from you. But underneath, you know, if we want to read something in, if we want to print something out, uh, either through standard out or standard error, you know, these really just come down to file descriptors that are you know, kind of set up per process uh, at the start. Uh, so here we've got, you know, standard n being file descriptor 0, so um, these are the integer numbers that they're associated with, so 0, 1, and 2. And then we'll have our own, which is just int, and we'll call it fd. Now, if we want to open up a new file, in this case, we've got this very basic file, it's just text, called test.txt. And all it has is a single line of text that says this is a sample file. So if we go ahead and go back here, so we'll go ahead and try out the system call open. Now what open does is it will take uh, two things in this case. It'll take a path to the file and then it'll take uh, a flag that is the access mode. Now if we go up here we've got a little more detailed description and it says it takes a, a file path which is where the file is, a flag, and then the flag can include uh, two things and that is it requires to have an access mode but then you can also add, add behaviors to it. So you can, there's a whole lot of behaviors that you can kind of go through and see which ones you really want, and we'll go through a single example of that later on in this video. But all you really need is an access mode, uh, as uh, along with the uh, along with the file path. And then there's a third option, which is also optional, that you need when a file is created, and this is going to be the permission. So what permissions does the file have? So when we're talking about an access mode, uh, we've got three kinds that we need to pick between. And that's, uh, we need to open it as read only, open it as write only, or open it as read write. So right here, we'll open up a test.txt that's in this directory. We'll open it as uh, write only, 
And what we'll go ahead and do is we'll print out uh, what this flag is. So this flag is something that, uh, uh, right here, this access mode, uh, th these will end up just being kind of individual bits. And so whenever we you know, have you know, multiple different behaviors that we want, what we'll do is we'll just or together uh, the access mode with all the different behaviors that we want. And then those individual, individual bits will be accordingly set. So we'll go ahead and print out uh, which bit is set for uh, write only. And then we'll go ahead and print out our file descriptor. So the next thing we'll do is uh, something very simple. And that's just when we say, you know, we don't care about this file anymore. Uh, we want to close it, and we, uh, which is what we do with this close uh, system call. And all we need to do is give it the file descriptor. Uh, because from the file descriptor, that just gets looked up in that, uh, that table that we talked about here, that file table. Now, uh, we'll go ahead and show another example, and that's with uh, doing a couple more complicated things, but not terribly so. So what we want to do is we want to open up a file in uh, write-only mode, like we did above, except this time we want to add one of the uh, behavior modifiers. So in this case, we want to open it and truncate it, which means that we want to open up a file. We want to open up a file for writing. That's what this uh, write-only says. And then we'll go ahead and OR, so we set the bit uh, that's, that corresponds to uh, truncation and that just says okay I'm going to open up this file and I'm going to dump the contents uh, contents which basically says I'm going to empty the file and so we'll go ahead and print out that flag and we'll print out the new file descriptor and then we'll go ahead and just return zero and exit uh, execution so as far as compiling this we'll just use GCC uh, it's just C code so we'll go ahead and do GCC dash O open open dot uh, uh oh, uh, other way, sorry, sorry, dash O, not dash C, and then open dot C, and then we've got our executable. So again, we'll go ahead and look ahead of time. This is test.txt, and remember that after execution, uh, the last thing we do is open it for as uh, with a modifier for truncation, so this file will actually be dumped, so it'll be empty after execution. So we'll go ahead and do uh, dot slash open to run it. And what we see is that uh, the flag for write only, we see that uh, printing out as a hex number, we see that you know only the very lower bit is set. So in this case, it's just one. Uh, and the file descriptor we get is file descriptor three, which kind of makes sense if we think about uh, going back into the code. You know, we are we already know that you know standard in, standard out, and standard error are going to take up file descriptors zero, one, and two. So logically, the next file descriptor that we have available to us would be file descriptor three. Okay, uh, and so the next thing is uh, when we add truncation. So this lower bit is still going to be set, so we still have one down there. Uh, and so that's going to still correspond to being uh, write only. And then over here we have uh, one of the upper bits set. So uh, every hex number just does kind of a refresher, corresponds to four bits. So out of the, the four bits for uh, the very lower number, only the first one is set. Uh, no bits are set in the next set of four numbers. And then in the next set of four numbers, uh, the second bit from the right is set. So that's how we get two. All right, so just a single uh, extra bit is set there. Uh, and so there's a whole bunch of different uh, flags that you can use. So feel free to you know, look those up if you care about the open syscall. Uh, there are certain situations where you want some flags and maybe not others. But that really just uh, depends on whatever uh, your particular circumstances. Uh, and so the final thing that we're going to show off is that if we go back to test.txt, we see that test.txt is now empty. And notice we didn't do anything inside of that file uh, with regard to, you know, dumping the contents uh, as far as manually. Like, you know, say if we wanted to overwrite a file using, you know, some way that we know to uh, with, within C, we simply open the file uh, with the truncation modifier and that will go ahead and dump the contents. So that's really going to do it for you know the basics of uh, you know very introductory file IO. Uh, if, if you want to learn more, we of course have my repository page or my GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch. Now this includes all my other series includes including stuff on GPU programming, C++ programming, Python programming, etc. So over here we looked at systems programming. So if we go here, the other topics that we're going to be talking about are you know, more in-depth on file I.O., buffered I.O., the more advanced I.O. concepts, things like process management, 
advanced process management, stuff like threading. So this will be using pthreads, file and directory management, uh, some more interesting stuff, at least in my mind, uh, things like memory management, uh, signals, and then also time. But for this video, we went ahead and looked at file.io. So feel free to download this, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.